Hey, my name is Rich, and uh, welcome to Hickory Sticks Woodworks Northwest. Uh, I'm going to walk through today with uh, a build on a stand for the new uh, Rikon bandsaw. I just picked this up off of a, a Craigslist buy. I got a pretty good deal on it, so uh, rather than putting the regular base that, that comes with it on it, I chose to build a, a roll around locking tool cart so I can move this thing around and, and do away with the regular stand and actually have some, some storage for the saw blades and everything underneath the bottom of this. So uh, stick around and uh, I'll show you how I, I, I built the whole stand and do a walkthrough on setting this up so where it's ready to cut because when it comes out of the box it is not ready to cut. So there's some setup that you got to do. So if that sounds good to you. Stick around and we'll get her back done. there as you can see. So now I've got this beauty right there. And you'll notice that it's laying on its side. Because there's no stand on the bottom of it. But look, there's some casters. But they sent that stand to go on there with it. But there's no way to put casters on the bottom of that thing. So I'd have to build something to go on there. So guess what we're going to do today we're going to build a base to go on this and maybe some drawers so right back here i've got a couple pieces of scrap plywood it's a red oak and hopefully i got enough to do that and i'll probably make the back of it out of a piece of mdf or something like that and uh maybe build some drawers put in this thing we'll
there's the wheels on it. Yay! Now we gotta build some drawers. So the face frame is together. I actually wasn't going to build a face frame for this, but decided at the last minute that, yeah, let's build a face frame for the drawers. I figured with the size of the box there and the uh, weight of that bandsaw, building a face frame to help support some of that weight is not a bad idea. I only sanded it down to 80 grit. Pocket holes in the back of it. Hold it together, some glue in the corners. Now I just got to get it put on there. So the pay frame is on. So they got this word piece put on top up here because of the bottom of the saw has got an inset right there. So that's going to sit right in the center of that and give it some support in the center of that, make it a little more stable on there. So that's why that's there. All right. So now I got to figure out my drawer guides and some drawers. Drawer, these are the drawer guys that we're going to use on this. They're uh, just the easy soft close, soft close uh, sliders. So with uh, the face frame, we got like an inch and a half gap back there. So these are not going to come out where the front of this is. So I got to fill this gap in back here with something. And the drawer guide goes in there, and that makes that just the way it should be and out to the front right there and then I can nail that down
All right, so the drawers on this were just a simple uh, box joint. Data on the bottom, box joint, sides. The glue I'm using, of course, is Type Bond 3. Use it for pretty much just about everything. I'm really big fan of these little acid brushes. They work really well for spreading glue. If I got a big glue up to do, then I'll find a roller or something. But for the most part, I really like these acid brushes. They work pretty good.
So in my shaper head, I got a, a Roman Ogie bit, and you'll see that uh, it's, it's got a pilot bearing on it, but I still use the, the board behind it with this profile. I, I cut the profile with the bit itself. This notch I'd cut with a straight cutting bit to clear for the, the bearing up here. But uh, I use this so that there's not as much chip out on the, the back of the board and I come up gradually make a cut come up a little bit and make a cut and I come up a little bit and make a cut and the profiles on these actually turned out pretty decent there's no burning on them got a pretty good cut all the way around on on the only all of them the one spot that I do have <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start out with the back of this. Uh, the stain I'm using is um, an early colonial, colonial maple varathane. I'm going to apply it with these stain pads from Makers. You can find these on Amazon. It comes in just one big piece. You take your scissors and cut you off a little square like that. And this little square will be more than enough to do this whole thing. And for the outer finish on this, it's just a fast drying Minwax polyurethane and a brush. Alright, so I had my son come up and help me uh, get that on there. We got that all stained and finished off. and. You notice the uh, top plate is not on there yet because it is over here and it is right out of the package it has this nasty oily stuff all over it so for this I'm going to use some uh, electrical parts cleaner electric clean because I'm an electrician and uh, that's what we use to clean stuff with so hopefully this will work for this too bunch of that on there and just start cleaning.
looks lots better. Now yeah, see if we can get foot on here. Yeah. Didn't mention this was heavy. This is the adjustment, the, the handle for tightening and loosening the adjustment. So we're going to loosen this up a little bit. And then we're going to turn the table. All right, so this is the stop block. And we got this nut and bolt that have to go up into that hole right there. Now we get that up in there. Now we got to bring this back down. We can still see we got a little bit of gap in, and this will move around till we can get Get it set underneath there. And then we have to take a square, put a square up here on the blade and get that set to where that comes in. Really square, so I'm too deep with the bolt already. So I'm just gonna go up, back up in there. Ooh, that looks pretty close. And that is it. So now we can reach up in there with the wrench and tighten up the upper nut on that. you here the inside of this on both ends of that we have 10 and 5 sixteenths and this 10 and 3 eighths so it looks like this needs to go out that way just a skosh See where we're at here. Just a hit. I go like that. And then we'll check. Make sure our fence. Oh, that is not 90 degrees. Alright, so I think we can adjust that.
On the back side of this, there's a, a threaded hole right there. Hole in the hole. certain length off, off of here. All that bolt does is when you want to get your guide out of the way, you run it back there and rest it on top of that bolt. That's all that is for, is just to have a place to put your guide there. So to set the roller guides on this they say that you should be a sixteenth these roller bearings back here should be a sixteenth behind the gusset of the blade so about the only thing I can do to get in there to do, do that is just kind of eyeball it but the adjustment for it is this screw this right here and I love how these are just done by hand this is pretty awesome that's makes it real easy it's no no need for a tool to adjust this at all I'm going to take it and just adjust it by eye best I can that looks pretty close to a and about a sixteenth right there and these rollers in and out need to be one thirty second So we adjust that with these here. In and out right there. And the closest I can get is a couple of these uh the cameras falling all over the place here. Sorry about that. I didn't realize my camera was being a problem here I got the feeler gauges I got a, uh, a 0 0.30 and a 0 0.015 about as close as I can get to 130 seconds so I'm just going to try and slide that in there and that's just barely starting to deflect the the blade as I put it in there so that's pretty close right there on that one kind of hard to do this and hold a camera at the same time no I don't have good camera stands and arms and all that so my apologies for the bad photography here and hopefully it'll get better with time I get more equipment to be able to do this. Just adjust that back out just a little bit. Let's see. Close that back up. Close this back up. I love how everything is just so easy to to maneuver manipulate on this to run this guard up and down it's just a knob on the back here loosen that up and crank how sweet is that we got another set of rollers underneath here that I got to adjust get this chain out of my way but I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to see in there. Definitely not something I'm going to do with a camera in my hand. So I'm going to do that real quick and we'll get back to you. So inside the cover of this, it gives you a bunch of information about, uh, about the bandsaw itself, troubleshooting stuff. Um, the length of the blade is 111 inch 
length of blade. Um, it'll take anywhere from a 3 16th to 3 quarter inch wide blade. Uh, gives you all kinds of information on, on how to, you know, the right and wrong way to tension your blades. If you ever decide to, to buy a bandsaw, I'll always look in the cover for the information on, on that. Um, also on the back of this, it has the little informational plate here as well. It tells you all the, the one and a half horsepower, blade length, uh, cutting speeds and, and all that for, for that information too. Of course, we're on with the, uh, on the knobs and the handle, so. First cut on the new bandsaw. Gotta love it. So down here in the bottom cabinet, it's got a diagram here. It shows you the wheels for the bottom of this, the drive gear. And this is the speed gear. So if you want to go faster or slower, depending on which part of this pulley that belt is on, that's how you change the speed on this. Some belts are, or blades are designed to drive at a, a certain speed and you can change that speed up by just moving your pulley over. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the build on this as much as I enjoyed uh, making it and putting it all together. I can't wait to get some use out of this. This really is super, super nice bandsaw. Rikon did a real nice job on, on building these. They're a really, really good, uh, to, super upgrade from the old Craftsman that I had that I ended up uh, giving away to my brother. So, <laughs> hope you guys get some, get some use out of it, but it's taken up a lot of space in my garage for a while. This takes up about half the footprint that that one did. Well, I'm happy to have a little extra space in the garage now in uh, my little shop here and I uh, hope you guys liked uh, if you did give us a thumbs up and uh, hopefully you get some subscribes and uh, well we'll see you guys in the next one so life's life short get out of the garage make some sawdust guys